I've had some trouble lately with some Ilford Delta 3200 and I need to sacrifice a couple of rolls just so I know how to shoot and develop the remaining rolls that are in my fridge. Just by using a simple scene against window light, cutting some of the film of the roll for a quick development test and mixing up some D23 developer and shooting various exposures on my scene, I should get a feel of how to shoot the remaining rolls of Ilford Delta 3200 going forward. So let's see how I get on. So a friend of mine sent me uh, a brick of Ilford Delta 3200. It's a wonderful film if you've ever played with this stuff. I don't often get it, so I'm not that familiar with it, but I have shot it in the past. And my friend Crimson Obscura sent me uh, a brick of this stuff from the Middle East. And I shot a couple of rolls and it worked quite great. It was, the, the negs were quite thin, almost underexposed. And I was kind of in my head thinking, what's gone on with this film? I'd kept it in the fridge since it was sent to me, but maybe something along the way uh, through the flights, through the x-rays, it might have done a little bit of damage to it. I don't know. Um, but I've got quite a few rolls of that stuff left and I want to try and shoot it rather than waste it. It is out of date by about a year and a half. So I did some tests the other day. Um, and this is a, a photograph of my daughter that I took, just um, normal window light, took a few photographs here and developed it normally. And hey ho, yeah, it's quite a heavy base and also the negatives were quite thin. So I, I overexposed a couple to see how they come out and they was okay, a little bit better, but not um, at the metered exposure that I, that I had taken. They didn't come out that great. They were quite thin and looked underexposed. And you'll notice that the first frame on this film that I've tested with, um, it's completely overexposed. That's because I shot it up at the sky, left it in bold mode for about five or ten seconds at a wide open aperture, just purely to get a completely overexposed frame. So when I've developed, I can look at that and see how, how well I developed the film. This one actually came out okay, but the negatives are quite thin, which makes me kind of think that um, I'm not sure it's not the camera it's uh, some every fog going on with the film so I need to test it anyway because I want to shoot the rest of that film so that was shot at 1600 and they looked a little bit underexposed so maybe over the time or through through uh, flying through the air or whatever going through x-rays it's just degraded a little bit that film so what I need to do is just take another roll of film shoot it on the little scene that I've got behind me and start off at 3200 and then keep overexposing one stop throughout the uh, entire role and then develop it and then have a look evaluate that piece of film and say okay the rest of the uh, stock that I've got in the fridge still I can shoot at whichever looks best for me so my simple test scene is behind me there on the shelf got a nice window light which you can see lighting me at the moment that's uh, illuminating the little tiny scene that I've got set up the Mamiya RZ67 and I'm now ready to take my shots I did my metering which gave me 2 50th of a second at f8 which uh, was at 3200 and then all I need to do then is take that photograph and then overexpose by one stop for the rest of the roll. Now what I'm going to do is leave about three frames at the end uh, unexposed. I'm going to cut that out of the changing bag and that little tiny piece of film that I've got then will be exposed to light which I can then do a few development tests just make sure that I get that right. Then I'll be happy once I get some results, if I get some results, that I'll be able to shoot the rest of them uh, films that are in the fridge on something wherever I want to go. And it'll work for me, I hope, fingers crossed. It's ra I'd rather that, I'd rather do this than go out and shoot those rolls blind and end up with nothing or thin negatives. So let's get on, I'll show you what I'm up to. And in my penultimate video shooting expired AG for APX100 film, I did a giveaway and all you had to do was tell me the name on the train. And it was, of course, Island Line. And I chose this comment as the winner. So, Nathan, if you email me your details, mate, I'll get these films off to you and also the print, and I'll throw in a couple of extra rolls for you to dabble with. So that's all done, all you need to do now is uh, put everything inside the changing bag, the developing tank, the reel, obviously the scissors and the film. And then load the film, the exposed rolls onto the tank and then the uh, last onto the reel. And then the last uh, couple of frames that I 
wasted. Um, I'm going to bring them back out, expose that to light. That's going to be my test for my development. So pop it all inside. And this is a changing bag from photoflex.com and it's called Changing Room. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but the last video uh, people asked me about it. So that's what it is. Um, it's from photoflex.com. I'll put a link in the description. So I've just pulled the backing paper off of the film. The film is in my hands. The backing paper is now detached and I've got the uh, piece of uh, little tiny sticky tape that holds it onto the backing paper. That's in my hands. That is the last frames that I shot. So I know I'm going to roll it back through so I get to the end of the roll and cut that part away. That's going to be for my development test. Right, let's put it all out. There's the backing paper. Ah. So the film's nice and the exposed film's nicely light tight inside there. And there's the strip that I cut off, that's the end of the film. Um, so it's now exposed to light, which is ideal for me to just dunk into some developer, get it fixed, have a look through and see what it looks like. So making this D23 developer is real simple, just two chemicals, sodium sulphite and also metal as well. Just be careful when you're mixing this stuff. I've got my water at 50 degrees, there's 700 ml water, I'm going to be making a litre of developer and there's my scales there, a little bit messy, these are my daughter's scales for her wax candle scent stuff that she makes but they work perfectly well and two little tiny tubs to put me chemicals in. And this is one kilogram of sodium sulphite here and this is just 50 grams of metal. So I need 7.5 grams of metal, this is what, and if you want to see a good video on this uh, John Finch has got one and also Peter Elgar as well. I'll put links in the descriptions. I'm not going to go deep into it, but I'm just showing you what I'm going to do. And when I finish this mix, I'm going to give this away to a friend of mine to play with. I need 100 grams of sodium sulfite. There you go, 100 grams of that stuff. Put that to one side. So I've just put the metal in, but I forgot to press the camera on. So there goes the metal anyway, 50 degrees of water. Uh, about 700 mil and I've got to say a massive thanks to James Lane and also Tim Soderstrom as well for giving me um, some hints and tips on where to get the chemicals and also um, what I'm doing with this stuff because I'm no photochemist I'm just dabbling with it and I'm enjoying playing with this stuff at the moment I'm enjoying this developer so that's all dissolved now in goes the sodium sulfide give that a good old mix now that's all mixed up I'm just now going to put the rest Put the water in to make a whole litre. There it goes, that's a litre. And that's how easy it is to make this developer, just two chemicals. They both cost me about £25 I think to get um, for the pair of them. I'll put a link in the description and what I've got, where I've got them from, but that's all it is, sodium sulphite, uh, android, andrius, whatever that says. I think that just means it's powder. And also metal as well. So just those two chemicals. So next thing I need to do is just Develop my film strip, put that on a timer, so I'll fill this up with my D23. That's not the one I've just developed, this is my, my stock batch. Okay, I want this to be at 24 degrees, so I'm going to put this in the microwave. So that's now at 24 degrees, I'm going to set my timer for 13 minutes, pop the film in and start developing it. In it goes, simulate the agitation, this is what I do, for about 15 seconds. Okay, and then every minute after, I'll just give it five little swirls and uh, let that develop. And after that, I'll fix it and have a look and see how dense it is. Okay, that's done, must be 13 minutes. So I'll put this back in his stock. Quickly give that a wash. Now we're sticking the fixer, get it fixed, and then we can inspect it. So I'll just fix this for three or four minutes and then have a look at it under the light. And that's the little test strip I've done there. I can just about see through it. Uh, when I hold this up to my lights indoors, I can just about see through it. So it's just about where I want it. So that's 13 minutes at 24 degrees. Let's develop the rest of that film and see how it looks. 
And here they are, here's the negatives that I've uh, shot and developed. This was at 3200, and then we went one stop overexposed all the way through. So 3200, 1600, 800, which looks probably the better out of the lot. 400, now we look like we're getting overexposed here at 200, 100. That would be 50 and that would be 25 uh, ISO. And this is the little test that I did and if I place something underneath that leader there, or that piece that I overexposed, you can see I can just about see through it. So that density is uh, good for me. So I'm happy with the development. And I haven't got a densitometer, so I can't see the density of the fog on the, on the uh, base of the film. But this is Kodak Tri-X here. And that's the 3200. But you can see that it's quite heavy. I think that's heavier than it normally should be. But that's a Tri-X 400 there. Obviously a totally different film, but... That base just looks a little bit heavier than what 3200 should be. But I don't really care because I've done my tests and all I need to do now is go to the dark room and do a contact print. Um, I'm reckoning this one here, which was uh, 3200, 1600, 800. If that one there comes out nice on a print without any dodging and burning, that means I can shoot the rest of those uh, films at 800 and get some nice results. So I've done my contact print, I don't know how well it's coming across on the video, but that's the first frame I took, which was at 3200, 1600, 800, uh, 400, 200, 100, 50 and 25. Although these are upside down, but you can see 3200 is too dark and so is 1600. I was looking at 800, thinking that might be okay, but even though I still think it was a little bit too dark. So I ended up going with 400 speed, which is this one here. If I go closer on the contact sheet, that's the one there that uh, came out the best, which was at 400. I went in the dark room and made a print with this negative, as you can see it there. Um, and I actually used a contrast zero for this. I did try it with a two and a half grade filter, but the camera just got too black while I was trying to get the highlights right. Uh, Hey-ho, so I ended up with a zero contrast filter just so that you could build up the highlights and slowly build the camera up. And I'm quite happy with the way that this has come out. It's not perfect print, but it just shows me that if I shoot this film at 400, I'll get some decent results when I get back in the dark room to make a print. So I'm glad I did those simple tests just to find out what I can shoot that film at. And now I know with that development process and that camera I can happily shoot that film at 400 it's not as, as sensitive as the film is meant to be but um, at least I can get some decent images and some decent prints from shooting the rest of that film at 400. The base of the film didn't really look that foggy on the edited version of this video but I'm looking at this one now and I can see it's more dense than what I'm normally used to I don't think 3200 is meant to be like this um, but you can put a little agent inside an anti-fogging agent's um, I think it's called Benza Trizol or something like that. I've never used it, but you can put anti-fogging agents inside your development to try and tame that fog down a little bit, um, but I didn't bother with any of that. So anyway, guys, hope you found that video interesting. Let us know in the comments what you might have done, something different. I'm not talking about the testing of the true speed of a film. I didn't want to go down that route. I just wanted to see what I could do with the rest of these films that I've got in the fridge, and now I know I can shoot them at 400 and print quite happily. But uh, let us know in the comments if you would have done anything different. I'd love to know. Also, let us know in the comments if you use that D23. What do you think of it? I'm still a novice with that developer at the moment. I'm sure I find in time where that developer suits me and for what films, but at the moment I'm quite happy playing with it and the results that I've got. I liken it a little bit to D76, um, but these prints haven't come out at all uh, over grainy. In fact, they're quite fine grain, I've found. So uh, we'll soon see. Time will tell with that developer. But it's certainly fun making your own developers and getting raw chemicals and playing around. Uh, as all film photography is fun. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you get something out of it. I'll catch you next time.